Hi guys, this is John Judd. Had you seen my last video, you'd know it was about recording home percussion and homemade sounds and field recordings and mixing all that together to try to get a percussion ensemble sound, like an organic one. And this one, I took a little bit of a different approach. This time I unleashed all of FL Studio's effects on the track and tried to let it be what it was going to be, organic and all original samples, yet still electronica in some way. It's still all percussion, it's just I unleashed more of FL Studio's capabilities on it. So just something about the track, it's all native plugins. There's nothing in here that was a third party VST or anything, it's all native. And it's in 5.4. I happen to, to like the whole uh, odd time signature thing. The last track was in 7.4, so I don't know if anybody caught that. Uh, this one's in 5.4. And I'm going to play the track for you now and uh, cut to a graphic because uh, my computer might not be able to handle at the moment playing at this buffer and also screen capture and all that. So I'll cut to a graphic and then I'll show you what I did. Here's the track. So let me show you what I did. Most of those sounds that we had in the track were actually samples pulled in. If you remember from the other video, I had a collection of something like 1300 homemade samples and or home recorded edited samples. And I pulled a lot of those things into Harmer. This is my favorite synth. For somebody who comes from a guitar background, that's what I do by trade in addition to writing film and TV music. This was a very user-friendly synth because you can take sounds from anywhere and drop them into Harmer and resynthesize them. And you can kind of learn the synth that way. It's a really easy way to wet your feet if you have no idea how synths work. That said, it's an ugly beast. There's a lot to be learned in it. So yet again, on this track, I started with a Drano bottle, which always turns on to a nice kick. Pretty cool because now once you drop it in there, you can pitch shift it. That was a Drano bottle. If you look over here under pitch, I've dropped it by four. Assuming that means four octaves, could be wrong. And let's see if I did anything to it. I added a little distortion to it. That's actually a feature of Harmer that I love. I know this isn't a Harmer tutorial, but these are just little things that I love to like mess with. A lot of times if you add a little distortion, just a little, it'll make the sound a little bit less harsh or give it a little top end that you might have needed. So in this instance, I think the uh, the Drano bottle hit was a little devoid of harmonics. So I added a little distortion or saturation. Okay, now this one, that's actually a phone hit. When I had a droid, I call them droid hits, but when I had a phone that was a droid, I used to, uh, I guess, hit it, apparently. <laughs> Maybe for good reason, I don't know. Here's the deal with this. Now, some of these sounds, if you, if you look at what I did up here, there's a, a low pass on it. And what that means is I took a little bit of the high end off. Just a little. I could make the sound a little less harsh, which in many times you might need if it's somehow been recorded. Some of these samples might not have been perfectly recorded, so they might be a little harsh. Again, I added a little soft saturation distortion, just a little. Okay. 
That's a dust spray can, you know, as in compressed air for cleaning computers. There's one I want to find, and I know I, so I had a whole bunch of instances of Harmer. That's the the big deal. Like, I think I used like 20 instances of, of Harmer to get the sounds I was looking for. That's a bucket. And there was another bucket, this one. Those are, if you listen to the track, one was on the left, one was on the right. Oh, that was the tiny one. I'm, try, I'm actually looking for something. And I'm not finding I'm actually looking for one of the shakers. I had some shakers that I had recorded. Ah, I think that's one. Okay, this is something I wanted to point out with Harmer. Right here, see this red line? A lot of times if you have a, a shaker or some percussion object that has a transient, but the transient happens to fall kind of in the middle of the hit, it usually doesn't happen with percussion objects. But if you have beads or whatever, some kind of sand inside of something like a shaker does, whatever's in there, a lot of times you're going to need to adjust where Harmer is hitting it because like right now that's pretty tight with how the timing is. But if you had where the original sample was, and you wanted that to groove, it would never groove. But if you did it, if you added the start line right there, it'll groove. And sorry if I have some sound outside. I have a neighbor going bonkers on his car doing something. I'm waiting to hear some screaming any mo at any moment. Maybe crying. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so just to show you some of the, the mixer inserts and sounds that we had. So Drano Bottle. Not much going on there. I have the transient processor, gross beat, droid hits, phone hits. If you heard something weird there, that was actually me having automated. You can't see it here because I printed all these to audio, but in the actual track, it was me automating the prism knob on Harmer, which is a great way to get different sounds. Wave shaper. Wave shapers uh, for distortion, carefully carved distortion. If you're wondering what that was, that is actually a pencil holder. That is a tape measure, a metallic tape measure. And if you took the sound, like I'm gonna take all the plugins off of it. A little harsh. So what I did, I took some top end off. If you, I remember the EQ. It was a little over aggressive perhaps, but I took a little top end off and added some distortion. That's what we had. I have a dog collar in here and another dog collar. Let me see if I can get some of the weird stuff. It would help if I played it from the right spot. Dust spray can. That's a bucket. Ah, that's one I liked. Okay, so it sounds a little like a fart or something, <laughs> but, but what, what we actually have here, this was me blowing into a soda bottle. I remember it made a snappy sound when I blew into it. The naked sound is this. We actually have Vocodex on it. It's great for getting things to just, you might get lucky with it, you might not. Okay, bucket. Here's another bucket. Okay, obviously that's some gross beat craziness. There's some other things going on here. Let's see, we have shakers. This one, this is a mandolin hit. I can find it.
this is an interesting thing. A transient processor is one of my favorites. As you can add just a little bit of soft saturation in the drive compartment here, and also kind of mess with the sounds in terms of uh, the transients in ways that don't have to be overly aggressive. Like this is just kind of sculpting that sound carefully with sounds and everything. It's all these small decisions and little, little touches that affect everything in a positive way rather than doing something totally ballistic. Tape taps. That's actually a tape measure. A little delay on there, not too much happening. Let's see what else we have. I, I yes, if you're wondering, those are samples I pulled in. They're all still mine. They're just uh yeah, just samples I pulled in from the collection. So they weren't manipulated with harmer. See so this one, ah. Go find this. That one is actually, let's hear the naked sound. That was when I was recording all these samples and all that, I must have cleared my throat, so I decided to sample that. Now all the crashes and metallic sounds, stuff like this. That was from the previous project, so it's those are all created from a dust spray can. So that's where we are. That's what I did. I hope you enjoyed the track. I know I didn't show you every single thing, but it's, you know, we only have so much time. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the, in the section below. And I uh, hope you got something out of this.